Product class, this video is going to help you to understand how to solve an APT that we're going to be doing regarding a satellite and using some known distances to estimate the radius of a particular planet. So follow along. This might seem complicated. If you're listening to the audio, I will explain it thoroughly. If you're just copying, there might be part of this you don't understand or a lot of it you don't understand. So listen along as we go through this problem so you can succeed on the APT. Here's a question. A satellite orbiting the Earth calculates the shortest distance to Earth is 6,400 miles. The shortest distance to Earth. So shortest distance to Earth is 6,400 miles. Let's deal with that first. So here's our satellite and here's Earth. We're talking about shortest distance. We got to pick the closest part of Earth and measure that distance. So take your straight edge. You're going to go from this dot on the satellite. You're going to go, actually I want you to go all the way to the center of the circle. Go all the way to the center. Make this a little bit thinner. Okay, now when it says shortest distance, 6,400 miles, it's telling us that from this point here to this point on the Earth, is 6,400 miles. Okay, there's our first point. And it says the distance to a point tangent to Earth is 11,140 miles. I've already put a point on Earth, so you can see where that's at. Here's a point tangent. Let's go ahead and draw that line segment from the satellite to a point tangent to the Earth. And it says that that distance is 11,140 miles. OK. So there's a point tangent to Earth is 11,140 miles. Use this information to calculate the approximate radius of the Earth. All right, now what I want you to do is, uh, if you go back in your flipbook under the rules of tangencies and tangent lines, you'll learn that if you draw a line that is tangent to a circle, and then you draw another line segment that goes from the center of the circle to, to the point of tangency, which is right here, then you learn, class, that this angle this angle right here has to be a right angle. Draw that dark so you can see that. That must be a right angle. So we just created a right triangle. Now let me tell you what's going to confuse you is you see this is 11,140 as this is 6,400 and you make the assumption that is the hypotenuse. That's a big mistake. The hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. The hypotenuse is actually the 6,400 miles. The reason that's smaller than this is because we're not measuring this piece right here. This piece right here is the radius of the Earth. And this red line right here is also a radius. So the actual hypotenuse of this right triangle is 6,400 plus r. And that has to be greater than 11,140 miles because you know the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So the interesting thing about this problem is the radius is not just one of the legs, it's also part of the hypotenuse, which makes the math look pretty interesting. But if we just follow along with our Algebra 1 skills and the things we learned in first semester, we shouldn't have a problem with this. So what they want us to figure out is, what is R? What's the approximate radius? So if you look at our diagram, I want to figure out what R is. Well, the good news is we got the Pythagorean theorem to rescue us on this one. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we know that this is the hypotenuse. So that's going to be the C value. So let's plug in what we know. So we know that our one leg is 11,000 
140 squared. That's a squared plus this other leg is r. So that's going to be r squared equals, here's the complicated part, the length of our hypotenuse is 6400 plus the radius squared. All we got to do now is solve for r. It's look a little bit messy, but follow along as we go. You'll see that you know these rules already. Now, I can put 11,140 in my calculator right now, and that is one huge number, and I'm probably going to mess it up. So I'm not going to do that yet. I put a comma there so you guys can see. Don't, don't write that number wrong as we go along. Let's just leave this as a number squared for now. So 11,140 squared plus r squared is equal to, remember, this is a binomial squared. That means you write it twice. All this math you've learned, if you're paying attention in this class, you will know all these steps. All right, let's write the next step. I'm going to still leave this as 11,140 squared because I don't feel like dealing with that bigger number yet. Plus r squared is equal to, remember, you're going to take 6,400. You're going to multiply that by the second binomial. And now we're going to take the second term of our first binomial and multiply it by the second binomial. This is the rules of multiplying two binomials. You did this a ton in the first semester. All right, next step, let's keep rewriting. We got 11,140 squared plus r squared is equal to. All right, so we've got 6,400 times 6,400, that's just 6,400 squared. And then we got 6,400 times r, which is 6,400 r. And then here we got r times 6,400, which is again 6,400 r. And then we got r times r, which is r squared. So all we've done is we've just distributed 6,400 times 6,400, 6,400 times r, r times 6,400, and r times r. Now this works out kind of nice. Take a look at this. We have an r squared on both sides. We can actually subtract that from both sides, and that's going to get rid of that. So now you can see that we do a little simplifying here. And now we end up with just 11,140 squared is equal to, well, let's add these two to get, oh, sorry, this is 6,400 squared. And these two terms are like terms. 6,400 times, six, plus 6,400, sorry, is 12,800 R. This r squared minus r squared, that got rid of the r squared. We got rid of the r squared here. It's getting a little bit simpler. Okay, so now we have to get r by itself. So I'm going to do something a little bit tricky here. I'm going to go ahead and rather than square these numbers again, I'm going to let the calculator do that for me. I'm going to get rid of 6400 squared on this side. And I'm going to subtract 6,400 squared on this side. And now watch. Instead of having to deal with all those big numbers, now I'm going to let my calculator do that painful work for me. So I'm going to go ahead and in my calculator, I'm going to put, see if you can see this, I'm going to put 11,140 squared minus 6400 squared and now I'm going to press equal and now I'm going to get a big number but it's way smaller than it would have been before now don't mess up this number it's 83 million 139 thousand six hundred so on this side of the equal sign I'm ending up with 83 million 
139,600. And that's going to be equal to, well, 6,400 squared minus 6,400 squared. Those cancel. And all I'm left with is 12,800R. And now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 12,800. That's going to get R by itself. We're almost done. Divide this side by 12,800. And let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. Again, remember the 12,800 12, cancels. And we end up with 83,139,600 divided by 12,800. And that's equal to 6495.3. We've got 6495.3 is equal to R. And there is our radius. So all these steps, they look really complicated. You have to deal with the fact that we've got an R value on both sides of the equation. But just go through all your process. Multiply the binomials. You're able to get rid of the R squared. Do the things you know in Algebra 1 to get R by itself. And you are able to figure out the approximate radius of the Earth. And the final part of our answer is going to be in sentence form. The... Approximate radius of the Earth is 6,495.3, and our unit of measure is miles. And there is how to use information from a satellite to take a sphere or a circle which is the earth it's a sphere but on a two-dimensional plane it's a circle and figure out what the approximate radius of the planet is okay have that all written down hopefully you understand that we'll be using that in an APT soon